when a scandal hits the Republican Party you will hear about it for weeks, months, even years. However, when a top Democrat, the mayor of Seattle, if forced to resign in disgrace over five underage sexual assault accusers nobody makes a sound. Well, folks, that's exactly what happened yesterday when Seattle Mayor Ed Murray announced his resignation. This time the victim was Murray's own cousin, Joseph Dyer. Mr. Dyer revealed that Murray had sexually assaulted him when he was only 13 years old and Murray was in his mid-twenties. One of his other victims, Lloyd Anderson, was reportedly happy that Murray finally was forced to resign but sad that it took five young boys being sexually abused by a respected Democrat mayor for it to happen. I wonder how many other victims are out there, Anderson said. Murray denies the allegations. But the more that come out over decades and from people close to him, the more they seem to hold weight. Now with his resignation, it's hard not to take the side of the victims. This is the kind of filth allowed to prosper in the Democrat Party. Perverts like Ed Murray and Anthony Weiner have shown how dangerous they can be. It's up to us to expose them by sharing this out to everyone everywhere so they see what's really going on behind the scenes. Ultimate justice the Supreme Court just gave Trump travel ban exactly what it needed. Before Donald Trump was even elected President of the United States he made it clear he loves winning. And now the Supreme Court has just delivered him the ultimate win for his travel ban. So earlier one of the lower appeals courts heard the case of the travel ban and tried to make a ruling that President Trump had to let in anyone who was pre-approved as well as anyone who was a close relative, and uncle, cousin, grandparent, etc. Well, President Trump was not too happy when he heard they were gonna use their loophole to let in 24,000 new refugees. That's why he asked the Supreme Court to act fast. And they did. Today the Supreme Court ruled that the Trump administration can uphold the current ban until after the Supreme Court has their official hearing over the ban on October 10th. No matter how you slice it, this is a big win for the Trump administration. This travel ban has been a headache since the very beginning and now there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Of course, the media will find 1,000 different ways to try and spin this against the president. That's what they do. They spin everything. Help stop that from happening by sharing this story, the real story, everywhere first. Expert mode President Trump just made three Democrats do the impossible. Democrats have been flat out resisting working with the president at all costs for seemingly no other reason than because they're mad he won the election. Little do they know, President Trump is an expert negotiator he wrote the art of the deal, after all. And he can even get Democrats on his side if he wants them. The president is trying to craft new tax reform which should be bipartisan issue as even Democrats have railed against the inefficiencies of the current tax code. Nevertheless, President Trump has been met with bullheaded resistance. Until now. The president hosted three Democrat senators from red states for a dinner at the White House Joe Manchin, W.V., Heidi Heitkamp, N.D., and Joe Donnelly, in. Each of these senators is up for re-election in 2018 and each knows that their constituents favor President Trump and want to see his policies enacted, The Hill reports. We don't know what was said at the meeting, which also included Vice President Mike Pence and several GOP senators, but the three Democrats came away publicly stating that they wanted to work with President Trump on tax reform. Manchin said, I look forward to working with the President the administration and my Senate colleagues on both sides of the aisle on tax reform and going through regular order so we can help all Americans and West Virginians prosper. Donnelly said he was hopeful to work with the president. Heitkamp said, as I've long said I want to work with those on both sides of the aisle on a comprehensive, permanent tax reform plan. I hope these bipartisan discussions continue. That's how it's done, folks. These three senators have signaled in the past they'd consider working with the GOP on tax reform, 
but President Trump nailed these discussions and helped bring that closer to happening. The Senate only needs a simple majority to pass tax reform, but after three GOP defectors derailed the health care repeal, the president is not taking any more chances. He promised us tax reform, the GOP has signaled they will get reform passed by the end of the year, and with President Trump's negotiating tactics, it looks like it's going to happen. H.T. The Hill Share Liberal freakout Trump may change crucial refugee law for first time in 30 years. President Trump has been a strong critic of America's current immigration system, which he, and many of his supporters, see as far too relaxed. President Trump has been particularly critical of the refugee system and has famously attempted to implement a temporary refugee ban on six high-risk countries. The Supreme Court will hear arguments over the legality of the ban in October. But until then, senior Trump officials have been advising the president to simply lower the total quota for refugees. Trump had set the cap at 50,000 in July, but has the option of resetting the number every October 1. The number has not been less than 50,000 since 1980. The quota Obama set for 2016 was 110,000. The New York Times reports Trump has seriously been considering this option, even referencing that Trump's senior advisor for policy, Stephen Miller, has been pushing for a lower refugee quota. This sounds like a great potential policy to limit the influx of refugees one that the liberal courts can't find a way to work around. If you agree with this kind of policy, show your support by sharing. H.T. The Hill When Anchor called Trump a white supremacist, Tucker Carlson blasted ESPN with the cold hard truth. Progressives have truly been ruining some fine American institutions, and ESPN is a prime example. The whole network has been hemorrhaging subscribers after a sudden hard left turn after being acquired by Disney. These are the same guys who wouldn't let an Asian American anchor named Robert Lee comment on a football game at the University of Virginia because someone might be offended. Yeah. They're that crazy. On Monday another one of ESPN's anchors went off the deep end on objectivity and flat out called President Trump and those around him white supremacists. Now, what did ESPN do about this offensive tweet? Not much. The network released a statement the next day saying the comments on Twitter Jamel Hill regarding the president do not represent the position of ESPN. We have addressed this with Jamel and she recognizes her actions were inappropriate. Oh, really? If she recognizes that her actions were inappropriate, why didn't she delete her tweet? In other words, nothing happened. Tucker Carlson at least was paying attention and was willing to call out Hill and ESPN calling her statements a bizarre Twitter rant, saying ESPN stood for endlessly stupid political nagging, recalling that when Glenn Beck said something similar about Barack Obama, the world stopped. Check out the whole segment here, it's great. When asked to comment, Carlson's guest Fox Sports reported Clay Travis said of ESPN's comment. It means that nothing actually happened because Hill is saying what the higher-ups at ESPN believe. I think this goes all the way to the top, Tucker.Disney and DSPN have decided we want to be a left-wing sports network. Boom. Sad but true, folks. Another thing leftists have destroyed. Share this out if you are joining millions of others and turning off ESPN. H.T. The Hill Right when Tim Tebow met with World War II vet, he reached up to do something miraculous. Former quarterback Tim Tebow has frequently been mocked by the left for being a Christian. Tebow just lets it all roll off his back and uses that faith to do good works and serve his community. That kind heart and gentle soul was on display in full force on Monday, as Tebow, a Florida native, spent time at a hurricane shelter with evacuees of Hurricane Irma. One person he visited was extra special and elderly World War II veteran who seemed so happy to chat with Tobo that he brought out his harmonica and played a little tune. 
Check out this sweet moment in the video below. Debo said the veteran totally uplifted his spirits, and from the look on Debo's face when he's listening to the vet, you can tell he means it. Debo also posted a picture with the hard-working Red Cross volunteers who run the special needs shelter. Debo was a star quarterback for the University of Florida football team, and went on to play for the Denver Broncos and the New York Jets. He later switched to baseball and now plays in the New York Mets' minor league system. Tim Tebow is a humble, kind celebrity who is frequently spotted showing enormous grace and class. He's exactly the kind of guy we need in popular culture for kids to look up to and emulate. Share this out if you agree. HT Fox News Busted Hillary Clinton lawyer Cheryl Mills just got crushed by karma like never before. A judge in Maryland just slammed Hillary Clinton's shady lawyers with a heaping spoonful of justice on Monday. Circuit Judge Paul F. Harris Jr. ordered the Maryland bar to investigate Cheryl Mills, Heather Samuelson, and David D. Kendall for destroying thousands of Hillary Clinton's emails. Ty Clevenger, a New York attorney hell-bent on attempting to prove Hillary Clinton committed perjury, filed a complaint against the lawyers, saying they should be investigated for wrongdoing. Judge Harris commented that Clevenger's complaint appears to have merit. Former FBI Director James Comey declined to pursue charges against Clinton for using a private email server as Secretary of State, compromising classified information. The FBI offered Cheryl Mills and Heather Samuelson immunity for their testimony. Things are finally starting to catch up to Hillary Clinton. The process is slow she's a big fish to fry and she isn't going to get busted over just anything, even if the least thing she's done would put an ordinary person away for years and years. The evidence is piling up though, and we're here to document all. Of. IT. The lawyers are now under investigation the truth will come to the light. The media isn't going to advertise this one, so share it far and wide, patriots. HT Fox News Trump greets journalist with a kiss, what happens next is insane. Katie Durr, NBC's former Trump correspondent, is coming out with a new book about her experience on the campaign trail. Inside, she makes a desperate attempt to cash in on her brief working relationship with the president. Trump's less-than-stellar opinion of Tur is well documented. During one campaign rally, Trump called Katie a third-rate reporter from the podium. At another, he gave the journalist one of his famous nicknames, Little Katie. Tur doesn't seem to care much for the president, either. In her new book, she includes a stunning passage that seems to accuse the president of something ridiculous. Before I know what's happening, his hands are on my shoulders and his lips are on my cheek, to wrote of a meeting she had with Trump. My eyes widen. My body freezes. My heart stops. The implication is pretty clear. Through coded language, Tur is desperately trying to evoke sexual assault. But all it was was a friendly kiss on the cheek. It's a standard hello shared by many presidents, including Obama. Tur knows this and the media knows this, but they don't care. All they care about is feeding the lie that Trump disrespects women. This morning, Trump responded to the sad attempt at defamation. Share so that Tur's story is seen for what it is, a baseless attack on the president. We can't let this anti-Trump reporter control the narrative on this story, 